Earlier, I spoke with Deputy Washington Bureau Chief for the Boston Globe, Matt Visor, about how the president has reacted to the war in Syria. He certainly inherited certain things, um, but it's up to him. He's the president now uh, to articulate uh, sort of how he views things going forward. And we've not heard much at all from him on Syria uh, or ISIS, for that matter, uh, or the Middle East just in general. So I, I think there's a, a lot of open questions about where his administration uh, wants to weigh in if they do. You know, I mean, yesterday was kind of an indication of something where President Trump was fairly muted in his response to, to the images from Syria, as was his Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, uh, who, when asked, uh, did decline to answer questions uh, about it. So I, I think that we're seeing some early signs of, of what President Trump wants to weigh in on and, and the things that he doesn't uh, view much. as America's role. All right, the president will also meet with the president of China tomorrow in Florida. There's tension over the economy and, of course, North Korea. What will you be looking for in that meeting? I think, uh, you know, uh, some of this is stagecraft, and I, I think it's interesting early on to, to see how President Trump handles himself in, in these situations. Uh, it, he's having it at Mar-a-Lago, you know, his home turf, uh, an area that he has uh, retreated to most weekends, and an area that he's... he's used a little bit. Uh, you, you remember the Japanese Prime Minister Abe uh, there as well. Uh, so I think some of it is, the, is sort of the body language and how these guys interact. Um, but there's major issues. Uh, President Trump spent a lot of time on the campaign trail talking about China as a currency manipulator. Um, he has sort of uh, criticized China on a lot of different things uh, in the way that they handle their economy. So I think, you know, whether there's going to be source for tension or not, there certainly is. But they'll Probably both leaders, at least on their first meeting, will try to avoid the, the tense items and, and maybe come to agreement on certain things. Um, one last issue to pay attention to, though, is North Korea, uh, an ally with, with China that has recently launched some ballistic weapons. So I, I think there's, there's areas of concern for the United States on that issue. And we'll talk more about that later in the show. Uh, Matt, switching to another topic now, CBS has confirmed White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon has been removed from his role on the National Security Council. What does this shakeup indicate to you? Well, it, it, it's an indication of H.R. Uh, McMaster, the new national security advisor, uh, flexing his muscle a little bit. Uh, indications are that uh, he wanted to return uh, the National Security Council back to some of its uh, uh, previous settings. Uh, you remember Mike Flynn uh, initially sort of changed things up a little bit, and, and Steve Bannon was added to this. So McMaster seems to have won out a little bit of a battle internally to uh, assert a little bit more control and, and have Steve Bannon uh, removed. Um, some of the White House uh, pushback on this is, is that uh, Steve Bannon was placed there as sort of a minder to sort of watch over um, Mike Flynn, and, and that's no longer needed. But Mike Flynn left about 50 days ago. So I, I think that uh, this is an indication of McMaster and some of the internal turf battles uh, inside the White House. All right, the White House has also revived health care talks with Vice President Pence taking the lead. Where is it headed now? It's still very much a, a work in progress, if that. Uh, you know, it, there's indications of uh, conservatives and moderates being told different things uh, from, from White House officials about where the deal may head. And that is really the source of friction uh, right now. The, the conservative uh, caucus feels like not enough was done to appease them. Uh, if the White House moves in their direction, they're going to lose some moderates. Uh, you know, so I, I think it's, it's a very dicey proposition at this stage. And in, until we see uh, an actual proposal, any legislation, or any announcements of a deal, I, I think it's, it's, uh, you'd be very skeptical that, that anything comes of these talks. So what does it say about a new poll that's showing 55 percent, 55 percent of Americans support Obamacare? What does that indicate to lawmakers moving forward? I think it, it, the, the risks and the, and the peril with, with moving forward, um, and, it, you know, it, it, the, the past two weeks have not looked good for the Trump administration, but they may have dodged a political bullet in some ways by not moving forward on, on this plan, which, which polled very poorly. It, you know, 
17 percent or so support uh, for the for the Trump care uh, plan. So, uh, you know, I think that the tide has shifted in, in some respects for for Obamacare. Uh, people have advocated for it and even Republican governors have pushed for aspects of that plan. So, I mean, I think that the, the political arguments have sort of been turned on its head on health care. I don't know. Final question for you. This was the biggest story on Tuesday. A former national security advisor, Susan Rice, is in the spotlight for asking for the names of Americans caught up in foreign surveillance. Uh, the Trump team is using this to draw attention away from the investigation into its ties with Russia. What's the likelihood that she'll have to testify on this? I think Republicans will certainly try to make her testify, and, and she's not done herself too many favors uh, in this in terms of sort of changing around a little bit about how much she knew. Uh, her current explanation is is a believable one, and, it, you know, th there's no indications that she necessarily did anything wrong or outside of protocol uh, as a national security advisor trying, you know, with access to calls that are being made with foreign officials and asking sort of who the Americans are on that side, it's sort of uh, routine procedures. Um, but, you know, she's not been terribly forthcoming uh, throughout the episode. So I, I think Republicans will seize on that. Uh, but the more interesting question is what was being discussed by these officials with foreign leaders and, and w with, with Russians about the Russian uh, intervention in the U.S. election. All right, Matt Visor in Washington. Matt, thank you and always good to see you.